So if you guys aren't using your phone, you could go to Google Images and draw your dolphin from there. Um, I use this because it, it's funky and it's not exact. Animals are hard because they're not, there's a perfect way they look. Every dolphin pretty much looks the same. And if you don't draw it like the perfect dolphin, it looks odd. Flowers are a little more flexible in that odd way. So I decided to go with a little drawing and then I used a little bit of Google to make sure I got the fins right because these fins were too comical for me. So they're, you know, they're dorsals. And then they have the little surfboard fin and then their tail. So you can do a fancy tail or a simple tail that's up to you to make it your Van Gogh. Okay. So what I did is when you draw, you divide your paper into three sections. And you don't want your dolphin smack dab in the middle. So you go above, get up, see how high he is up there on that paper. So you just kind of do a question mark and then the nose comes off easy like this. And then he's got a nice fat body and then you can go into his tail. And the tail should be symmetrical or it can be elongated a little bit, but think of him who's pushing himself out of the water, kind of put that little energy into the, okay. Um, the next thing you need to do is do his eye. So I go like this and then I put his eyeball right there. Okay. And here's a blowhole, but you don't need a blowhole unless you want to be really perfect. Okay. And if you have too much pencil before you paint, take your eraser and kind of lighten it up because you don't want it too dark. Okay. And then his, uh, let's see. So this one I drew pretty nice. He's, he's not as fat. So let's see if I can, we can shape him down a little like that. Easy peasy, right? And then his nose, I like big noses on dolphins. Let's come up and come around like that. Now he looks a little healthier, yeah? <laughs> and then the fins, they're pretty much like connected like right there. And so you can get fancy with the fin and just repeat it. So imagine it's on the other side of his body like that. And then the dorsal fin goes right behind the blowhole. I don't know, is this a dor dorsal fin? You don't want it too big. Uh, dolphins don't have huge dorsal fins. Sharks do. I made a little smaller. Yeah. And then next we're going to do our underpainting. So we're going to put this one aside and then we're going to work with our paints. Now that we, you don't have to draw the water yet because we're going to just do that with paint. It's just swirls and stuff. Okay. So what I like to do with, um, the I do an underpainting. So some people get their canvases a little wet, but these paints are really nice and thick. So we don't need to do that. Um, so you're gonna have some sky. Um, yeah, I should show this. So we're gonna have some pinks in the sky. And so it's nice to have it under your paint. So what you do, there's two colored paints for paint, for pink. There's a misty rose which was um, kind of light, which is like a Cora color. And then you can take the red, yeah? Since we don't have pink, and then you mix it with white. So this one is this mixed with uh, this one. And this one is this in white. So I still have the white on there. I don't wanna use up their white. So you can see that the coral has a little bit of yellow in it. I mean, if you can't see it, trust me. So you, you, this is enough paint to mix. You don't really need that much. So you're gonna take a big white brush and we're gonna use both because we mix them up both and we don't waste paint. And you're just gonna do some underpainting for the sky and the, yeah. And you can go close up to the dolphin or, or you can go past it. It's up to you. So maybe I should wait for everyone to finish drawing, but. You can always change your dolphin after you do your underpainting too. So you could, you could touch them. It always looks nice when a little color comes up on the dolphin because water is so reflective, the colors show up everywhere. So don't be afraid to use those colors. So we're not making a, an exact picture of a dolphin. We're doing an artistic rendering of something fun. We're just gonna have fun with it. So now I have all this pink on here and I, I like to mush. I like to leave like white streaks and then throw in some pink. So, you know, just kind of use up your paint, no waste. Make it chunky a little bit? 
Oh yeah, Chunky's good. Yeah. So I shouldn't have pushed that one out. I, I, I locked it, I liked it. But we'll go back and... And it, this is another trick. If you don't like what you painted, since it's acrylics, you get your paper wet, you can actually wipe off some of the paint because it's plastic on plastic. And so it's always a fun trick to know, right? Other, other uh, mediums aren't as forgiving. So now my brush is wet, I'm gonna dry it off, but I don't wanna waste the paint. I'm gonna keep the paint. I'm gonna throw in other colors. I'm gonna use it up because I'm not gonna use that much when we go back. What's everybody doing, are they? Are you mixing your colors? Are they drawing? They're good? Cool. Oops, a little red got in there. Oh. So if you guys ever look at a sunset or the sky, the prettiest time, of course, is at four o'clock till 7.15 when the sun goes down. The sky just illuminates. And there's, it's never just orange or yellow. It's got pinks and purples. And so even during the day, the bottom of the cloud, it's not really gray, it's purple. So we can throw in, you know, purples too. So purple that we have here is lavender. This is if you want to do a sunset. Uh, so what happens when you do purple, it, it comes out darker. Your picture won't be so crispy light. Actually, this is a little too bright for me. So that's why you, when you see the sky, the color, it's not really purple. It's, no, it's a, a white with a little bit of purple. <laughs> it's mostly, mostly white, right? Or gray. Yeah, so. Use a big brush so you can go fast. And then you want to put it like under. And it's just going to peek through under the clouds. Yeah, okay. Actually, when I'm done, that's when I do, when you finish a painting and you go back and you um, add little details, the purple is always the fun one to add. And white and purple are my friends. I use the purple as a shadow and I use the white as a highlight. And that's the difference between not finishing your painting and finishing it. Okay, now we got the underpainted started. Let that dry. Don't stack your paintings because then you'll get uh, paint on the bottom and you stack it, it'll get paint on your next one. So you guys ready to do the next layer? So since we did the sky, let's go do the water so we can let the sky dry. And you can see what happens with the sky. I start adding layers to the underpainting. Okay, so the water is also it's a lot of fun colors. Um, you need a lot of white. So instead of wasting it on a can on a, a mixing table, I go squish, squish, squish. <laughs> Swear to God, it's so much cleaner and you don't have any waste. I don't like waste. Don't waste my time. And then the Krillian blue is the color of our ocean. Oh, that's the sky. Never mind. Don't trust me there. Right, ultramarine. That's one of the colors. Oh, this is it. This is it. This is our, our green water. This is a viridian. This photograph is light colored, but it's really, it's a darker green. Oops. So okay. do you guys, you know how to open your paints? I hope nobody's struggling. Okay, so usually what happens is you get these caps, you don't even have to take it off. Here we go. Okay. The cap is the uh, puncture. I don't know if everyone knew that. Do they all know that? So open your paints. There's a puncture thing right there. And then we could have. So the reason I put it here is because we're gonna have fun. So take a bigger, a bigger brush, like this. This one. This is their number ten and crack it open because there's when they're soft and get it wet and scrunch it up. You kind of want it to flare out, dry it off a little bit. And then you start to swirl. You do your swirls here and the swirl here. And I believe this is how Van Gogh painted. <laughs> so this color is gonna actually be on the bottom because you're gonna go over it again. So make your swirls a little different sizes and then you don't have to cover. 
So now I got nice globby paint, right? I'm gonna leave it there. And you take your blue, it's a little, it's so dark. And then you make your swirls. So it's painting the fast. Then afterwards, we'll go and make it look like real, like more dimensional swirls, but this is basically an underpainting. So, is it too fast? Oh, no. No, she, was, she was doing other stuff. <laughs> so Acrylics are like the fastest, easiest uh, paints to play with. But if you really like to paint, you should start working with oils. They're so nice and they don't dry. So you can blend it and you can make things more photojournalistic, photorealistic, whatever the word is. Yeah. Did you add, oh, you added some of the green in there? Yeah, I've been doing green in, in the acrylic and the, what's it called? Ultramarine. Yeah, so that's a start. So it's gonna take a while to dry. No, it, won't. it dries real quick. In your brush. Now we'll put it to the side. Don't stack the wet ones. We'll put these away for a second. They only have one. Oh, that's true. Okay. So now this is, should be some. I gotta hear. Sorry. This should be somewhat dry. So what we're going to do first is the clouds. And this is the tricky part. You want to get a cloud like right above that purple. I use a lot of white paint. Sorry, folks. If you're running out of white paint, your canvas is white, so don't paint that spot. <laughs> I call it negative painting. So I'm going to glob it in there. Yeah, this is plenty dry. Uh, Christine had a question. What colors did you use for the dolphin? Oh, I haven't done the dolphin yet. Yeah, we're gonna wait. We're gonna, we'll get there. That was a, a pre-made one she was working on over there. Oh, really? Like she was wondering about this. Oh, that was, um, I was working on a underpainting and I just did it in gray. Yeah. Because I thought if I overpaint it, it'd be cool if the colors came through. But I did the back fin on this one, so it gives that dimension. And it'll when you do this, the clouds, the sky. I'll show you. Okay, so sky. You. Oh, you're welcome. What color is this? This is phthalo. Can everyone? It's P H F phthalo. And it's navy blue, which is kind of cool. And then we're going to use the sky blue one, which was a Carillion. Use a lot of that. Okay, this is where the fun comes in. You take this and you just kind of go over your pink and do your sky. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving spaces where the pink can come through. Huh? And then, of course, leave something white. And your lines don't have to connect, they can just float out there. And you're pretty much going to do this across the whole sky and try not to hit the dolphin and get a little dark in there. So the top will be darker. That's when you want to use the that phthalo, that phthalo, that's it. Yeah, because you want it darker. And then when you want to go lighter, you use the Carillion. They look the same. No, they're not. I imagine this is how Van Gogh painted. <laughs> so I'll show you what happens here with the pink. You just leave it a little bit. And there's a mixed color. 
you pretty much just keep going. Keep going. Starting to look like a sky. So I, I just pushed my paint off the brush, kind of like, like pushed it, you know, use the edge, but, and then I, I pick it up again. So it's on the tip and then I just float over everything and kind of, oh, and when I use a round brush, I'll show you this trick. We get it wet first because it's dry and damp it off. It's a round brush? This is a round brush. That was a, these are flat brushes. Oh, okay, yeah, so you have some, like your seven or your five. Right, yeah, I'll grab the seven. I just grabbed one because I didn't have it out. So it's not too much bigger. So get it wet, break, break it down a little bit, get it wet and dry it off. And then get the paint on the tip. So the, why I like the round brush, so I put a bunch of colors on it and you roll it. You go back and forth and you roll it. So you're, you don't want a straight line. You don't want to look like you were on a drafting table. And then you pick up the other colors and you just roll your brush. Isn't that pretty? I just hope you like it. <laughs> mm. Try and cover up some of this pink. There's a lot of pink. Did everyone change to a round brush to do this? Oops. Yeah. <laughs> we'll clean it up after it's all work. <laughs> and then remember, if you don't like it and something's not working, it's acrylics. You can put the next color right on top. And I just spilled water there. So I kind of dab that up. So you want to go around your dolphin. So since we're going to paint the dolphin, we don't have to be totally perfect around them. And if you want to add dolphins, you don't have to stick with one. You got a little pink in there. I could do this all day. So let's see. Get to leave the clouds. Is everyone following? Oh, good. Okay, good. So we'll just keep going. So does everyone know the difference between acrylic paints and oil paint? Good. Okay. Oils are made by argon, argon. It comes from a tree sap and it's an oil and you mix it with sapphires and gemstones. And that's what the old painters used to use is uh, crushed gems. Um, that's another reason Van Gogh's stuff was so brilliant is because those were sapphires and those irises. That was just not a uh, pigment. Pigment comes from something. So um, that's probably why he couldn't sell a painting because he wanted a lot of money. <laughs> but they're worth a lot because his technique was so good. It was so, um, forward thinking and it was the old Renaissance guys were using uh, rocks and stones for their colors and he stuck to gemstones. And he put it on so freely and expensively that people couldn't afford the paintings. But they don't like to discuss that. They like to talk about other things. So, so just keep making your sky. Make sure you leave a little pink. Not too much pink. So like where I see it's light and it's boring, I just throw in a darker color. And then if you can also put a, um, let me just clean that off a little bit. Leave the paint on your brush. Shouldn't You shouldn't have to throw it away. And then you can throw in a little light there. If you put in too much dark, I'm like, oh, I don't want that color there. So we'll just work on like one little spot. So like right here is dark. So, and it's the darkest color I have. So I'm gonna go in there with the white and just put a little, break it up. So it looks like it did something. So that, yeah, that's too late. I didn't like what I did. So I'm just gonna go in there, go over it. It's like you're slipping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so funny, guys. 
Can you add water if the paint gets dry? You can. Um, Acrylics are great like that. Acrylics are water-based, so they wash off. They will stick to your clothes. Um, you can heat set it in the dryer and it won't ever come out. So like if you ever want to paint your clothes, you can use anti-acrylics. You don't have to use fabric paint. Plastic is plastic. And then um, when you heat set it, don't use too hot. You don't want it to boil, but um, it will stay, it will stay on once the two plastics meet each other, your clothes are plastic. And uh so, so it keeps your clothes, they call it fire resistant. There's a finish on your cloth. So I hate to tell you that. And there's also a, all sorts of strange thing in your laundry detergent. But anyway, the paint will stick to it all. And so if you have to wash it out, do it right away. And a, a trick is, uh, are you all 21? Vodka. <laughs> Vodka will get anything out, smells, anything bacterial, paint. But you got to do it right away with paint. That's the, the fancy paint remover. So a lot of people do that instead of having those um, acetone. Yeah. Yeah. But can you add like a can you add a little water onto your palette like in days if, if um, it's a little dry and you I'd say add more paint. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they are water based. Um, what happens when you add water? It gets real slippery, and then you like let's see. I don't know why I cleaned it so good. So then you end up with like a, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what's going to happen when it dries. It's going to shrink a lot, but it works. <gasps> Where'd the pinks go? Okay, so you got to be careful that you don't do what I did. They have some pink. Well, so like I said, I lost. So now I'm going to change color. So I washed the brush pretty good. And you know, you scrub it, it's not gonna hurt the brush. Um, when you're done, so you soap in water and don't leave it in the water because this ring, the wood swells and then it, it pushes this opening to expand and then the wood will shrink and the thing will fall right off. What do they call this thing? I don't know. So I got a little blue on it from picking it up on the paint, but that's okay. You just roll your brush. We see the water, it didn't stick. Where I had um, used a, a watered out paint, this paint had no water, extra water in it, so it didn't stick. So I don't use. And so it'll take a little longer to dry. But see, I like this. I think that's called an happy accident. It's like, there's all these funky colors. Jackson Pollock used to spray paint like and cover these canvases. And if you ever saw one in real life, it's, oh, it's fabulous. They, um, every color has a different shape and the shape is repeated like a computer. And then he, he does it so many times, you, you know, you stop seeing that how organized it was. It's really good and I make great wallpaper, but it's, um, it's well, you know, so you get to do that too. <laughs> Next class, I'll teach you how to do wallpaper. So, yep, like I added water there, and now it's, I don't know, it's too slimy. So, you roll the brush and get the paint on the tip, and you're in business. I like to have points on everything, I don't know why. So let's see if it sticks. Does that work out? So like this, I can see the brush stroke and I'm like, eh, you know what? I'm not gonna waste the paint. I'm just gonna use another paintbrush. So this one's the pink one, I'm gonna keep it here. And then this one will be the blue one now. So I can see the brush stroke, so I'm just gonna cover it up. It's a little more dark. Oh, so the bottom of the pink is usually by a cloud, right? Not necessarily. Oh shoot, why am I doing this? I got it already. 
nope. We're gonna go for another brush. It's like preschool, all the colors stay on the paint. Can't, and then you don't have to wash the brush. <laughs> so I just flex the brush, it's never been used, I got it wet. And I'm going for white, I have a little bit of white here. Ugh, there was too and that's much. a smaller round brush? It is, and there was too much water on it, I ruined it. Okay, let's go for the white, wait, titanium. Titanium is a mineral. That's where the, that's where the colors names come from. They're uh, emerald, because it's a, a gem, sap green. Never, I wouldn't wear it. No, I'm just kidding. I would like emerald. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I was going for white. So I just kind of want to work on my clouds, get them a little thicker. Yeah, I like using those round brushes for the sky. Yeah, see how nice that worked. Oh, so I was saying go over the pink, get the white right next to the your pink sky. Like so. Does that work? Should we do the water? How are you guys doing? How's everyone doing? Just be, please be messy, have fun. You know, this is a, a fun time. So I was painting sideways, don't ask me why, but when you look at it, it's, really... it's so much better to just look at it, right? I can't stop. See that little mound of paint? It's gonna dry flat, but it's gonna look really nice because it's not gonna have an interruption of other color. All right, we're leaving that white. Okay, so now we're gonna do the bottom. Oh, we already did some, right? So keep working on your sky. Oh, this is one I used a little bit of water and it didn't, it's still so translucent. You're definitely gonna have to go over it. So, oh, so does everyone know the difference between watercolors and acrylics? Oh, good, you all do. Yay. <laughs> watercolors are opaque, no, they're translucent. So when you squeeze out the paint, it already has a, translucent quality to it. So when you layer your different colors, you can get all these cool techniques. And you can kind of do it with acrylics, um, but we're kind of doing it this way. Um, see the watercolors, how when, it, when this was wet, it, it showed up in a different color. And so that's the fun thing you can do with acrylics is turn them into a watery thing like that. But we're doing sky, so okay. So I was hoping this would dry. So the next thing we're gonna do, uh, go back to our watercolors. No, the water, yeah. <laughs> the blue, green. So we're gonna mix this little mess right here. And I think it's still too green. Do ultramarine. Let's see, this isn't definitely ultramarine, this is the phthalo. Let's see how that looks. It looks fun. So you don't have to mix it all the way. You know, don't have to waste time. So this is gonna be your dark colors. So what you're gonna do is avoid the white and the green. I should use a smaller brush. Take a small brush, crack it open, get it wet, dry it off. So I'm gonna start drying up. Oops, there's water on there. You're gonna make all these pretty little, little swirls. And go where the color is the, the same. So you see like I got the same color in here. So I break it up with a, this little mixture. Yeah, so let's see, you can just keep going and going and changing things. 
You can break things up. So this is supposed to be fast. So now this this little lump, it doesn't, uh, it, it didn't swirl. So you gotta break it up there. That looks pretty. So I'll do the same. The oh no, you're on paint. No, you didn't ruin anything. You take it home anyway. <laughs> okay, so does everyone know what opaque and translucent is? Rainbows are translucent and you're opaque. To make a rainbow look like something, you have to add you have to add something so it stays. So that's why paper is white and you see the rainbow on the paper. If not, you just see right through it, right? So how do you get that look? You just use, you lighten your colors and you actually put down the rainbow first and then you paint around it. And that way it doesn't have to, it has a white background instead of um, your sky background. So if you ever have to paint a rainbow. But just thinking about the paints when they're um, opaque or translucent. And to make your watercolors opaque, you add white or black or gray, and that will make your watercolors a solid. So if you make a boo-boo on your watercolors, you can cover it up with white paint. And then, but if you're ever in an art show, they put a flashlight in front of your painting. And if they can't see through it, then it's not a true watercolor. Oh. But they're, they're getting away from that. Those judges, they're so silly. That's a true watercolor. And does everyone know what a jaclay is? No. A jaclay is when you take a photograph of an art piece legally, <laughs> make sure my butt is covered here, and you reproduce it and you print it on canvas. There's machines that print it on canvas. And you could also send it to something like a red bubble and they'll put it on a mug, a t-shirt, a greeting card. So with all our printing now, we can print anything, but a jaclay was the original way to copy. So when I was doing jaclays, I don't know, like 30 years ago, I would go back and paint over them to just add like, so not, they were all the same. So, you know, just, and then of course, when you're finished with painting, it's never finished. You wanna go back and do something else to it. Um, you had a question. Uh, where can people go to see some of your artwork? <laughs> well, working on my Instagram. I bet you guys are really good at it. Um, I'm going to put all my stuff that's for sale on Instagram. And uh, I had a Facebook called Dee Dee Taylor Artist, which I haven't done anything to in about five years. But there's really all, a lot of my beginning paintings are on there. And I do watercolors. So it's mostly watercolors. I don't do oils because they smell bad and I'm really sensitive. And I don't do acrylics because they're, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, it's just, watercolors is a challenge. That's what it is. I like the challenge. So, so Didi, Didi, Taylor, Didi Taylor artist on Facebook. So when you get your Instagram all up and running, we'll- I do actually, I think it's, so I give you the, my business name, it's, Oh, my girlfriend did it. Like Haiku, H-A-I-K-U, Mermaid, Lei, L-E-I. And that's on Instagram? Uh, I think so. <laughs> but there's, I don't know if there's pictures of my artwork yet. We're working on that tonight. So. Got to catch up with all you groovy kids on the computer stuff. Oh, sure. I used to have a little store. My husband was a photographer and I, I made a really good painting once and he's like, oh, what if we copy it? And I figured out a few years ago that painting made me $10,000. Oh, wow. So don't discount yourself. It was an amateur because <laughs> you can have so much fun with it. So there's the water swirls. So when this dries, you can go over it into another swirl. 
So what do you think, Van Gogh? Do we pass? I think he'd like these. And you have to find your style. Like this is not my style. My style is I'm really precise. And on watercolor paper, it's a little difficult because um, the grain is so large, so much larger than this. So sometimes at the end of a painting, I'm sitting there like this, you know, picking it apart, but. Does everyone feel a connection to Van Gogh yet? <laughs> oh, so he, when he painted Starry Starry Night, he painted it when he was in the same asylum. So no one's, no one's normal, is what I'm trying to say. So let's have fun with this. We'll go to the DMV and get you an artistic license. My favorite joke. Do you get it? <laughs> okay, so um do i have another one? Oh yeah so this one i just did like a a turquoise underpainting so we'll see how that comes out when we do the swirls so so many ways you can do this i mean you could also do the graphic one where you know you paint it one color and you just do line drawing with a marker afterwards they have um we used to call them rapidographs when i was in college now they're just like 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 thickness of a, a sharpie kind of point and uh, we used to do this with a, a, an ink thing and it spread apart and you put it in your ink and you gauged her thickness of your line. It was really hard. So these new pens. Are, and then when I was in college, I came up with a, what they call a rapidograph. And if you got anything near that point, it, ink wouldn't come out. So forever with a pen. So <laughs> graphic art is so fun now and you can do it on a computer and right, you guys are so lucky. Okay, so the swirl, let's see, we'll do one that's the bottom so I can paint over it. There, so when that dries, with the acrylics, you can go right over it and you don't, the, the bottom one, it disappears, right? So with watercolors, that would not disappear. You would see it. So now I feel like. <laughs> you get paint everywhere. So water swirls. It's really hard to do a circle and, and to turn your brush and rotate it. So just pretend you are. I guess you can do a little bit. You have, and it, it doesn't come out straight. You might add colors to this. Same way you did the sky. So it's just mixing colors right on the, the paper. That way you don't. See, now I went over. Oops, I went to that one under. So I'll just go back. <laughs> the beautiful thing of acrylics. You can't make a mistake. So I think that looks pretty. It looks similar to that one, right? But see, this one didn't have as good underpainting. So there's some white in there. So it's, that's another thing you can do. So someone asked about is using water. If this is dry, which it's not. Let's see if we can get a dry one. Okay, so like, what was I saying? Yeah, so if you wanna add another color, like I started with white here and oops. Um, so you water out your paint. Let me add a little more water, it's a small brush. I'm gonna do it right on this one. So it's it'll be more translucent. So you can actually change the depth of the paint by adding the water. Does that make sense? So yeah, this is a good example. I'll get this color right here. So it's 
it's thinner, but it's still um, the color you wanted, but it's the underpainting, the under colors will show up easier. Yeah, but you gotta put it on over this to go, okay. So like, I don't like the swirl in this, so I'm gonna fix the swirl with a different color. Yeah, okay. So where should we go? Should we work on this one? <laughs> Let it fill in the dolphin a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you see, it's wet. Okay. So, with the dolphin, oh, you did smoosh this good. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We can fix acrylics. If this was watercolors, it wouldn't have stuck to um, Jesse's hand. And, um, but you can see the, the underpainting showing up. So, that's a good thing, right? We didn't lose anything. In the, okay. So, Don't call me messy Jesse for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You got to be messy when it paints. Okay. So does everyone, they, anyone need a clean paper towel? Do you need a clean paper towel? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm going to change my colors to do the dolphin. So the dolphin, he's gray, right? But he's going to get light from the, the, the sky on top. So this part will be lighter than this part. And you want to make them look round. So this is where you have to mix. So maybe this is a good time to use water. Okay. Just takes longer. Okay. I'm afraid it's going to spray all over me. There we go. So there's some gray. And his reflection from the water isn't going to be a dark under color. It's going to be the colors that come from the ocean is going to be on his underside. So you can actually start with that color and you can do it like, and I got water on the brush. Okay. So you want to do the, the, the uh, so which the, color are you using now? Oh, what? sorry. I'm using the, uh, that mix. <laughs> the water color, the, um, what did we use? We used the ultramarine along with the viridian. Okay. That's what that is. So, yeah. So that'll be my under color for the gray. And then, of course, you got to go under the fin. And then you could also make his eye that color. Get that over with. Oh, that came out really cute, yeah? So now this, this fin is going to be really light. So where's my white? I put it away. Okay. Take out some white and the best way uh oh the best way to do something that you want to keep really white is just finger brush really good <laughs> i'm running out of i'll just pick out for you i think oh thanks okay so the first thing to do is paint it white so get in there and it goes right over your background so if you made a mistake this is a good time to cover it don't use any water on this just use the straight paint. You want it as thick as you can. Yeah. But of course, his thing is he's gray. So I'm going to put them gray, but the gray is going to be below. And I'm going to mix it right on the paper, on the canvas. Sorry, called the paper. And there's his dorsal fin. You want it as light as possible because it's the closest to the sun. And then later on, when this dries, you can go in and tighten it up. It's a little big for a dolphin. It kind of looks like a shark. Wait, this is acrylic, so you can just push it off. Oops. <laughs> just shorten it that way. Oh, that works. Okay. So since it's still wet, no, I can't, can't move the paint around. Okay, so one of the things is uh, when you're painting, the, the fin looks like it's kind of blended in with the sky. So go back and get your blue sky, but you should do it later on. You shouldn't do it while it's wet. And go ahead and separate it, adding sky to it. So that's how you make it pop. Does that make sense? Too much water on the paint brush. <laughs> Oops, that we let that go. Okay, now the, the dolphin, you just put the color in. 
And for, don't forget, we're doing Van Gogh, so we want to see the paint strokes and those brush strokes, I mean. Go over your sky and then pick up a little of that paint. Really not going to show up that much, but it does. Isn't that pretty? And the fin, I would leave this. Uh, Okay, my friends, help me to what's the side fins are, the flippers, his arms. <laughs> did I do the wrong? Oh, I don't know if I did. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna get some white and I'm gonna put it at the top. Yeah. Let me blend that in. So that's where the sun is shining. And then I also do the top of his fin. Oops, I want to get some, I don't want the gray to show. I want it to be white. Wait, 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 right on the top. And then you're gonna do gray. Might as well leave the paint on there. And then we come in. So this is what you want, since the bottom is dark, you can use the same gray. And then I'm just gonna take off some paint and mix it with the white. And you just wanna leave a sliver of the lightness to separate it also from the, his body. So you can see like over here, it, um, it blends in with his body. So the trick is, I don't know why I cleaned that, that's so crazy. You can take another color, it doesn't matter what color. Oh no, that's the same as the bottom. Let's do purple. It's like eyeliner, it just separates it. Those little, little fancy touches. See? Ta-da! And no one really sees it, but it separates it. Cool, right? Ah, now I kind of get rid of this turquoise. Oops. See, I made a mistake. How long does eye? I kind of like the white around his eye. Yeah, I kind of like that too. <laughs> So that right there, that was a boo-boo. So nice thing about acrylics is, does he look good? He looks amazing. So animals aren't hard, so don't forget you want it to look round, right? So the top is light and the bottom should be darker. So I think he needs a little more of our watercolor, ocean color. Ah, and then you want this side also to be round. So what you can do is you can put a, a white highlight right here and then blend it in. It's just ever so light and it's ever so washed away there. Oops, that's too much. Oh, it's wet, so it's not sticking. Oh, it'll dry. And then I want to put a little dark on there, but I don't want to use the turquoise color. So we're going to go with the purple. Oh, it did dry up here. La, 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 la. Oh, it looks like you were going to put a little fin there anyway. I am, yeah, but that's going to be really dark. So we want to make, nope, that's not dark enough. So what I'm trying to do is I'm, I want this to be dark and then medium, light, medium, dark. 
so it looks round. Yeah. So light in the middle makes it look round. Right. So I'm cleaning my brush off really good so I can control exactly what I'm going to do. When I'm being messy, then it doesn't matter what's on the brush. And purple doesn't like to wash out, right? And then take, oh my God, wet. Make sure your brushes are dry before you get the paint on them. Not too dry, but you don't want to drip paint all over. So the purple is supposed to blend. <laughs> Come on, purple. Here, we'll just fake it. We'll just put it in there like that. Yeah. So now you look rounder. And your paint will dry darker than the color you see. That's all paint, even wall paint. It's a huge problem when people are trying to be exact and then the paint, when the paint dries, doesn't match. And also um, watercolors will take on the color of your canvas or your paint, your paper. So when you're painting watercolors, the paper turns gray when it's wet. So when it dries, the gray is gone and you're like, oh, it's so much brighter. It's so fun. It's like endorphin rush is really good. <laughs> and dolphins rush now. Let's <laughs> go in there and get a little purple on them. And that cover, that'll get covered up. So the back fin, this is gonna be fun. What color should we do the back fin? Because we're not, we're not sticking to like a true dolphin color, right? Oh, you know what? Really get fun. Give him a pupil. Oh, it's water on my brush. I'm just taking the water off, not the paint. <laughs> oh, it's too wet. So it looks like an eyelid. That's pretty cute, right? And dolphins have hair if you want to put eyelashes on. What's that? Dolphins have hair if you want to put eyelashes on. They have eyelashes? Yeah. Oh. They have eyebrows. <laughs> so there's a dolphin. Oh no, so look, when I made a mess. I got a drop of water on there. You just wipe it right off. What's happening? Oh, we have to do the bottom fin. So we have the gray. So we'll put the gray on and we'll see how it looks. That looks good. Oh, this is what I'd like to do. Is it pick up some of the ocean color, kind of get a uh, mix it in with whatever's on your brush, get it on your tip and just Oh, that's already here. Wait, we can't do the same color. That color is already here. Oh, I was gonna get rid of that thing. Okay, I know what I'm doing. We'll go with purple. So you wanna put a little shadow in there. Oh, where's the water coming from? Get the water off your brush. Water is our friend, but. So use this as a shadow, kind of mix it with the gray. I'm cleaning my brush because I'm gonna go back and get some gray. Kind of blend it, there we go. You take a, you get your brush real dry and you can blend the colors and move it around a little bit like so. And I lost it. Is there enough purple in there? There's never enough purple. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Uh, so now that the brush was wet and the paint was wet, it came off. It happens with acrylics. It happens with all the paints. So there's three techniques. There's you get your canvas wet and you use wet paint. It'll, it'll bleed, right? It'll go everywhere. 
If you have dry paper or dry canvas and you use wet paint, it sticks. If you have wet paint and you try and put wet paint on top of it, it totally picks up. It doesn't stick to your canvas or anything. It won't work in watercolors, it won't work in oils. So when your paint is wet and you try and paint over it and it's still wet, it pulls it up, just so you know. So now it's dry, so you can gather in some color. So the happy dolphin will never be gray again. And then if you want to have fun, like um, you can put like the water swirls on top of his tail. But usually the dolphin jumps out. He's pretty clean, yeah. So I don't know. It's up to you guys. It's your artistic license. So I'm kind of feathering and getting rid of that line. I like it better without it. Just kind of blend your paints while they're still wet on a dry brush. So now we got this mistake in here. So before I forget about it, what I'm going to do is take this. It's opaque white. And I'm just going to get in there and shape my dolphin. So it doesn't drive me crazy until I finish it with the sky color. And then I don't want it to look like a shark. So we dead in that. You take off the pointy tip. Yeah. That's how you paint a dolphin. It's not that hard. Okay, so this part like it's smushed out. So just cover it with the white paint. So you can always fix your lines in acrylics. I kind of like this thing here. It's like a happy accident. Those are fun. Don't get rid of those kind of things. Like those little turquoise sticking through, those are happy accidents. They look good. Oh, so another tip of his nose, it should have white on it because it's in the light. And then we're going to blend it in, get rid of the extra. Oh, that looks so much better. Okay. That's how you paint the dolphin. And if you want other dolphins, go ahead. Yeah. We'll look on your iPhone and the images, the great photos. Of <laughs> she likes your phrase, happy accident. So when you're working with preschoolers and they spill their paint, you're like, well, we wanted the floor that color. And then you try and clean it up as fast as you can. <laughs> so you guys know when you pick up paint, it gets everywhere. So what I suggest when you paint is always have extra rags that are wet. So um, if you're working with people that don't work or you don't usually work with paint and you're like, oh, I'm making a mess. If you have a wet rag, you can clean it up right away and then put it away in the trash can. Don't sit it out somewhere because that paint will bleed through and get on everything. Paint has its own mind. It's kind of like a three-year-old. It just kind of goes wherever it wants to go, right? <laughs> okay. And then if you're working with oils, you can't use water. I'm just blending that a little better. Oh, and to darken things too. Oh yeah, we did the underline. That's enough. I can just keep going and going. See, it was wet and moved. Okay. So what else we do? How much more time do we have? Oh wow. Okay. Let's put another dolphin on the page. Well. Should we keep working on this guy? Yeah. Okay. So since why draw, I like to pull instead of go across. But I think I'll go across for you guys. Has this been upside down the whole time for them? Yeah. Oh. Okay. You want to see what their faces look like? <gasps> I do. Your DVR set up in the computer. Let's see. If anybody wants to put your camera on and we can see what you got. Check it out. It's get oh, What a pro. Oh wow, look at that turtle dolphin. Oh, where'd that one go? Courtney, beautiful. Juliana, beautiful. Or Julian, beautiful. Oh, and there's Jesse. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? 
Oh, Liana, Milani. Oh, that's beautiful. Hi. Perfect. That's it. Oh, the interpretations are beautiful. Christine and some random dude. <laughs> beautiful. Oh, where's Julian go? Oh, those are so good. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's see. That's it. Mr. Van Gogh. Oh my God. Now, if you could get rid of this harsh line, mm -hmm. that'd be even better. I'm waiting for it to dry. Right. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Oh my gosh, a close up. Oh my God, it's so good. So now get some of these blues in the, in the aqua and get the aqua in the blues. Mm. And then it won't feel so separated. It'll look real, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Get rid of some of that paint. That's okay. Yeah, just because we're messy doesn't mean we have to be, we can't be perfect. <laughs> How would you fill in, like on this one? How would you fill in the, the, the spaces in between? Your oh, okay. See how it bleeds through? Oh no. So get all your paintbrushes in the in the but the best thing is just throw it away right away. So it doesn't make more of a mess. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. Vodka works good. Okay, so I got some blue on the brush. And so I'm just going to grab some paint, a lot of paint. And I'm going to squirrel over that one. And then I'm going to come in with other colors. What do we got left here? <laughs> I'm just going to get my point. That's blobby. I'm going to break it up. It's like a little pebble. Can you push it up? And that's how you cover it. And if you want to put more white on it, you can. You don't have to worry that you covered them up too fast. I hope I didn't go too fast for you people. Because I did it now. <laughs> All right, so we'll just finish, right? Hang on. So this one, you can just kind of get creative. Oh, I don't know about you guys, but I like shiny paint. And so um, these paints are real flat. They don't have a lot of um, shine to them. And when they dry, you can see it's super uh, unshiny. And I like shiny. So what you do is you get yourself a can of spray paint. It's called Clear Gloss Outdoor UV Protected Spray. And you just put like three or four coats on there. Let each coat dry and it will be shiny and UV protected. And then if you don't want to buy a frame, you buy um, colored tape. And you put a little binding on the edge and it looks like a frame. So 
And then right now they have like all those cute Japanese tapes and all those cute things. You can do that or just get electric, black electrical tape was what I did when I was in college. We had to do presentations and we had to do like a whole art museum, like had to have 30 pieces plus all your other college work. And so they had everything be framed. And I just went with the, the good old masking tape thing. And people were like, whoa. And I did it on paper. So I put, you know, edge of tape, you know, and you got to make sure your corners look good because it is, you know, the final, that's what a frame is. But I didn't have $40 to frame, you know, times 330 oh, pieces. <laughs> I was like, well, how do you, how do you cheat this? Well, teachers use borders on chalkboards. Why can't I use it on a piece of paper? So that's how I ended up using tape. And, uh, and then they came out with poster pack where you could put a shrink wrap on a picture frame, a picture. And then they put similar tape on the edge. I'm like, oh, it's, see what I invented? I could have been rich. And of course I got an A in that class because I did something that no one else would do. They all spent their money. What did she do with them? Or he, what did they do with their painting? Oh, so the person said she doesn't like to frame her paintings? I don't you don't frame them. You have to display them though, because it gives you the endorphins. You wake up in the morning, you're like, I did that. I got creative juices in me. And today I'm going to do something else that's creative. So you have to show up to yourself, right? So if you're not, you have an easel, you put it on the easel. If you put that black tape on the edge, it's just so nice. It looks so good. And you have like six of them together. You get like a chair rail in the house or no, it's a picture rail. And you display them all together, like in a hallway. It looks so nice. You can change them around different sizes, but as long as they all have the same frame, they look good. The black tape works good. Oops, didn't clean my brush. So what did I do to the white paint? Oh, he's so cute. Look at all. I am making a mess. Can you show how to put on this one? You're going to put like a splash. Oh, yeah. Well, they all can get splashes. Oh. <laughs> we'll, we'll practice the splash. Okay. So, splash is a teardrop. I'll just do it on this one. And the sky is going to come, you know, where there's no, where the water's not swirling up. So, usually, well, Hmm, because on that one, I did it on the background. It looks good, yeah. yeah. We should do that one? Sure. Well, I'll just do this one. You're in charge. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. So basically, it's the swirl, right, that you're going to do. And then it has a, a like a, a teardrop to it. What do they call this? A paisley. This is a paisley. Get, use up your gray paint. And just imagine what the water's doing, you know, swirling around. Ooh, what did I do? I lost my turquoise. Okay, that's too dark, but you know, put some more white on there. Let me get a brush. I guess the only time I ever really clean the brush is when I'm going to go back to white. I use a lot of white. I should have got extra. <laughs> because I painted them. So the ones I did at home, I didn't use that much white to start. I guess I did in the sky.
I'm gonna take a little brush. Oh, this one hasn't been used yet. So you wanna get it wet and dry it off good. Get some white paint in there. And then I'm gonna make this one pretty. Not pretty yet. <laughs> Something like that. And then you can just do like so it's a circle. You can do water circles. Those little tadpoles, aren't they cute? <laughs> you like Bob Ross, happy little tadpoles. Right? But I think it's happy trees, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and squirrels, he likes squirrels. This one looks like a musical note, it's gonna come out round. Try and get it round. If it's not round, you can go back in with the, but the sky will be across from there. That's why I didn't want to do the water drops because you got to do the sky should be done there. Yeah. So the sky's not finished on this one. Looks better on this one. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So here's the little water drops. And I, I don't, I don't, water's not white. Right. So. You can do the same thing to make it look round. You can put a little bit of blue at the bottom. And then clean your brush off. So now since the underpainting's there, oh my God, there's so much paint on here. <laughs> Come on, brush, clean up. You wanna use the, this looks like cleaner. No, it's not the water, it's the, the brush it's gonna clean up. Okay, so the brush is clear and clean. So you just, with the acrylics, you just kind of blend it. and then you, your water drop has that dimension. And then leave a little bit of white on the top. So it doesn't look better than just a big old white spot. So you have to think about all these things that are round and your, your basic roundness when it sits, uh, if this were white and it's reflective like an egg, you can see there's a shadow underneath, there's a low light on the bottom and there's a highlight up here and then it's blended. And then even with the, the shadow, there's a darker shadow under the, my eraser compared to what also shadows out. So there's, you can do um, two steps in a shadow and you don't have to blend it, but on the egg, you have to blend it to make it look round. And then some people like Van Gogh, he's like, what, one color? You mix one color with white, you can't do that. So we'll just drop in a little purple. We'll blend it in. And isn't that pretty? <laughs> and then you take the white mix with purple. And this is what finishes a painting. A lot of people don't know how to finish a painting. So you take, uh, I gotta get it the right color. Okay. And you put a purple right there. You curve it. Did that work? It's a little dark, should have been lighter. Lighten the purple. There, just a little hint of purple. But those are kind of small. You guys can do small stuff, right? <laughs> Come on, brush. <laughs> okay. Oops, too much water. Oh my God. Blending, blending, blending until the line is gone. Oops, this one's a little too much paint.
Okay, that one didn't work. So we'll just kind of <laughs> say goodbye. We'll just soak it up. Do it later when it's dry. But when your canvas is wet, it's going to stay wet for a little bit. So don't think that this is going to dry it off. I'm going to get it a little picky here. And I also want to separate the water drop from the background. But once the sky's finished, it'll really pop. But let's see. There we go. Blend that together. And I can see this water drop needs a little extra oomph. These are little crazy things that you don't have to do. <laughs> there, almost. I wanted to look round for you guys. I keep losing it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Almost. We'll go in there with a the little purple. I'll blend it. There. Sort of. It's still not right, but anyway. <laughs> that one works. Okay, so those are water drops. And the eye, you want to do more than one color on the eye. You want to do more than one color. Mix your colors, make them work for you. So like on this one, use bigger brush. So I just mixed water with this blue because it started to dry up. And it's gonna be a little more translucent than um, the solid color. So it just takes more paint later on. So I like that edge. So I'm painting with um there's the same thing going on so i'm breaking it up a little bit so you can see like this is one color so i'll break it up and go right in the middle And repeat it around so it stays um, connected, even though it's you don't see it. And then you can leave the paint on your brush. I'm gonna add another color. This is so dark. You gotta add white to your, your mix. That's better. You see, I took a little bit of white paint that was sitting over here. 
I'm gonna get it on the tip of your brush. And go over that dark color. <laughs> Yeah. We'll take a clean brush. Pretend it's clean. Nope. <laughs> and we'll do white again. And since there's water on this, it's gonna dry a little lighter than the solid white, which would be nice. So the colors come through. Anybody have a question? I take a little big break. I'm not used to talking. It's looking cute, huh? He's a mess. It's dried up the page as well, so over here. What color should we do? What happens when we mix this two? <laughs> Waste no paint. Ooh, I like that. I'm trying to make a lot of it. You don't really have to mix it yet because. So this one I drew in these little circles so you can actually like paint it in. And then what you do is um, you change the color and go right next to it. It's a fun way to do the waves. Guess what I'm gonna do next? Since I'm cleaning my brush, I am going for white. <laughs> oh, white. So there's a white glob somewhere here. So I'm gonna put the white on the top. So this is the sunlight's hitting it. And it's supposed to mix nicely. And it dries a look good. But so if you lose that, you can go in with a paper towel or you can just use your old fingers. Oops. <laughs> Can get messy. Oh, the other thing you can use for a mop, take a clean dry brush, just go in there. Oops, kind of break it. No, it's not working. Use it as a mop. Oh, I totally washed it away now. That's okay. You cleaned it up for me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. We'll get the white on top. Oh, 
got a brush to like see if the dark side looks this dark green like those white synthetic looking ones or mm -hmm. what is that? So we used to make brushes out of sable, which is a rodent, like a mink, but they call it sable. And those are unheard of to be found right now. And if you do, they're like $100. So what they're doing now is they're making them out of squirrel. So, and there's, you know, I don't know if the squirrels are harmed in making the brushes or whatever. And they probably do it like not in America. So we're not hurting our squirrels. So the synthetic ones are great, but I don't know if they last a long time or if they start to shed. That used to be a huge problem when we were kids, the brushes would shed. This new stuff is so competitive, it's so good. It's so inexpensive. So when I was in college, I will tell you, it was like 40 years, 40 years plus, um, one paintbrush cost me $35. Wow. And I still have it because I only bought one paintbrush. And then when I would do like an art project and I needed six colors, I only bought six colors. This was unheard of. This would have cost you zillions. So I only bought four tubes, five tubes of paint. Yeah, I figured that's... What? Oh, they're showing us? Oh, come on, friends. Show me, show me. So this way I have two things of water. Are these clean? Sort of. We'll stick them in there. They're showing. We're getting the... Oh my gosh, where'd it go? Come back, Tracy. Ooh, look at Quinn. Oh my God, those are really good. Tracy, come back. Beautiful, is he cute? Oh my God, oh my God. Beautiful, I love him. Anybody else? Okay. This is fun, you guys are awesome. So go to the DMV and get your artistic license. <laughs> Oh, I brought these to show those. These are painted pebbles and I paint both sides. So you gotta be really, it's really tough because once you paint the backside, it'll stick and then it's a mess. But these are acrylics. And then I spray them with that UV light, the UV spray, the clear coat. And uh, there's like 30 coats of spray on there. And you gotta be careful not to overspray because then it sticks to whatever, you know, it's, it sprays and then it drizzles. And the drizzle will stick to what's underneath. So what I do is I do something like this and I spray it as light as I can each coat. And when they start to stick, you gotta throw this away. So I use my puppy pads for my rabbit and then I use them on the rabbit and he gets painted puppy pads. <laughs> oh, do you have the mermaid one? It's somewhere. I don't know. No, I put them, they're all out. Do you have them? Oh, so the, the original idea here is the mandala. So it, it creates energy. So if you feel you have a low energy day, you do this, this circle um, and circle patterns and the Indians uh, from India call it a mandala and it brings you energy. Oh, wow. There's Tracy. Are you doing two also? Yeah, that's his, um, his mom. Oh, there's two people. Okay. Oh, very good. <laughs> and you guys are in California, right? Oh. Yeah, I think we're in California. Oh, you miss yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> one of our yeah. Hello. Yes, I live in California. This was mommy's. Okay. okay. This, so this is, your, was mine. Nice. Off. Good job, kiddo. I love it. <laughs> oh, did you unmute yourself? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you having fun? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. And I think like painting. That's the most important part. Okay, we're gonna go in for the finishes. Okay, I'm mute. <laughs> that is cute. Oops, I don't need it. Let me grab some paper towel. Silly me, I brought like three pieces. Okay, so as it's drying, it's like too purple there for me, but that's okay. You know, that's, that's art, happy that's accidents, beautiful. right? Some happy accidents. 
So to make the sky go faster, and since it's dry, let's see, sort of dry. If you just use water, you can get it across. The sign's working. And it's a little faster. We can fix it. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Who's saying that? Uh, one of the pictures over there. Oh. Bye. I like how this one's coming out. I don't know, it's no different, right? There's a, a paler blue, you gotta get that pale blue. We'll do this one with some white in it. There we go. Yeah, it was so dark. Make sure your pinks get to show through. And see, like that's too much. That's not that's not how the blue sky looks. Actually, the blue sky is pretty solid, isn't it? <laughs> that's why we're going to Van Gogh. That looks better. And so if there's like too much of a color, like a too solid, that's when I break it up and I put a different color inside of it. So that's how I pick where I'm gonna do these ribbons. So like there's pink here, but it's off. You know, I want it just there. So I'll just do these little lines, cover it up. Like this white stripe is too wide, so we'll try and fix that. I'm just putting paint on the end, the tip. I'm going in here and put on the tip. And this paint dries really flat, so if you leave like textures, they're going to go away. Unfortunately. So if you want to add texture, I think they use hot glue now. Yeah. And so they, they draw it with the hot glue and then they paint over it. Okay. Yeah. Mixed media. We're gonna go around his fin. So now that I went around his fin, I gotta clean up the brush a little bit. Let's kind of get rid of the chunky. See, the pink is just showing through just a little. Casey says aloha and mahalo. <gasps> Oh, hi, Casey and son. <laughs> so nice to meet you. I hope you paint more. It'll have to be like a evening project with you guys. Take the time to paint together. We both enjoy it, right? 
will we be little for a short time? <laughs> They're cool when they get older. Though. Yeah, I'm going in there with these different colors. It's kind of leaving just a little pink. This one, we got some purple thing going, right? So now you get to use up all your paint that you squished out. <laughs> what are some other things that you paint besides rocks? You have you painted on other surfaces? Oh, other surfaces? Uh -oh. I like to paint my clothes. Where's Haley? Where's Haley? There's Haley. Hi. Oh, beautiful. Look at oh, you. Awesome. I knew you'd come out good. Oh, wow. Is You're darling. Oh, is she darling? Oh, it's beautiful. Congratulations. Bye. You pass. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to show us? So just keep painting and put more paint on it. And everything has to be like little tiny feathers, just kind of tiny little, little things. And then it looks Van Gogh-ish. And then of course you can go in there with a black marker and do the latest craze thing, but. All right, thank you, Courtney, yes, thank you. Oh, look at this. I got this dark point in the, in the oh, corners. Thank nice you. Oh, this one? Oh, Esther. Oh, oh Esther, nice, I got Esther. Oop, I, I didn't see it. Purple. Oh, Esther, can you do it once more? Oh, there she is. Oh my God, he's perfect. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love so his cute. smile. <laughs> now add water drops and just add stuff to it. Yeah, you can add a crab climbing on a on a water mark or, you know, have fun with this. What's the best thing to use? What's the best thing to use for sign this? Oh, I use a ballpoint pen. It <laughs> writes the best and it rolls. Like, a, you know, like if you try and write with a paintbrush, you're going to look yeah. like Vincent Van Gogh. Anyway. <laughs> he didn't have a ballpoint pen. No, it's cool if you can do it by hand. It takes a while, though, to do letters. Okay. So on this one, I realized that I like the dark, dark, dark. So I'm going to come in here and use up my dark paint and just color in this. See how cute that edge is? Get a little water on this. Yeah, I said don't use water, but it's starting to dry up. So I'm just grabbing a paint here. I'm <laughs> like, what color is that? Oh, okay. I can put this here. So all I'm doing now is I'm breaking up these long spans of color with little, um, what do you call those? More lines. You don't want to cover them up. I'm just going in between them. Don't lose your pink. Yes, it's kind of wet. So roll the brush.
I was thinking we could add music or something, but I'm listening and I'm noticing that we have the aquaponics making <laughs> a nice soothing trickling sound in the background. Oops, I got some texture going there. <laughs> It's fun, right? I think anyone can paint like Van Gogh. Oops. I think most everybody is done. Just gonna wrap it up. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh no. No, no, it's not. I'm gonna take off that big lot of paint. Yeah, so just you know, color it in and do a lot of um, texture um, by by doing different colors next to each other. This, this is a big lab. We're just going to push this off. And want to wash it on. But that looks cool, right? It's like a cloud. And if you get your dolphin painted, then you just go back with your dolphin colors and touch it up. So what I'm doing now is I'm realizing that the dolphin needs to be where he's dark, I need to have lighter color because then it separates. So if his side is dark, then the sky light behind it, it pops out better. You see, I changed it. And so like where he's white, it's good to have the dark. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. And then he'll pop out. So like right here is white, so we can go really dark. Oops. Let's go put it dark. Oh, look and pop out there. So those are the finishes that people always talk about. Like you don't know how an artist finished his painting and it's somehow, even though it's a big mess like this, how, what makes it work? And that's, making sure your objects appear more sharp than your background. So your background can be more um, out of focus. So in a student, instead of doing a sky like this, you could do like a subtle, you know, just one color and then just put a few clouds in. But I like doing it this way because then he pops out. So right here, like it's dark purple. So then we can do like a lighter sky. And of course I have dark color on the paintbrush. Here. There we go. Get a little bit of light in there. So it pops. <laughs> So I'll be working on this for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> Cause that's not right. It's getting there. So this is too light. Like it's too, it's too serious. Oh, that was a good color. So like this is light. And if I go too dark, it's really gonna stand out too much. So I just go a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, not too much darker. Make sure you leave your little pink showing there every once in a while. See how I made a little darker right there? Just to. I'm just going to color that white. I don't like it.
So pink is just going to be a hint to sliver. So if you guys, um, um, Rihanna, if you can type in my email address and do, you know it off the top of your brain. Huh? <laughs> R-A-D-O-V-I-J-E -E at hawaii.edu. That's for Jesse and um, to the, those to their left on the call, if you want to take a picture of your um, painting and go ahead and send it to my email address, we can share it with everybody and get those out there. I also send an email out following this with some information on when you can watch the recording if you want on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And following the Welcome Week activities, we'll also be sending out a evaluation. And so we are going to have a prize draw with that, I believe. If you fill out an evaluation, there's a prize that you can be entered to win. I've heard rumors of AirPods, but I'm not quite sure yet. Um, but something good like that. So we hope that you guys will fill out our evaluation and let us know that, how you think we're doing with our events. Um, and keep it positive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think if um, we're going to wrap it up here a few minutes early, but um, we would like to thank Judy. Very Aww. much for You're coming welcome. and visiting with us again. And we hope everybody enjoys themselves. And we hope that everybody has a wonderful rest of the day. See how this side worked and that side's still a mess? It just takes a few extra minutes to go back in there. Yeah. And just add more, I don't know, ribbons, what do you call these? Van Gogh lines. <laughs> <laughs> it was the whole thing. I was just trying to like stick to his, you know. See, that's too light. So you need to clean your brush. This works. Yeah. And it comes right up. Acrylics are so fun, aren't they? You can't make a mistake. You can fix it is what it is. Yeah. So like, I would say like this much of it is done. I don't like what's going on here. It's it's too um, flat. I need I need more changing. It's okay. You just keep coming back to it and coming back. Right. To it and coming back to it, right? See like how this one worked. It kind of looks like you pour. I poured it on there, but it was all done with the paintbrush. And it just it's even. It's not even. It's I don't know. It's got a good balance of dark and light. <laughs> this, I don't know. I didn't get it yet. It's good. Yeah. Okay. It's got to dry. All right. Do you want to say good night? Oh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We had a great time. And you guys are awesome. Keep painting. And paint supplies are so cheap. There's no excuses. And now that you got your artistic license, because I gave it to you, you passed. And uh, go ahead. Go. Go paint the world. Go paint your utility box in front of your house. <laughs> they're, they're allowing people to do it now. They're not painting over them. It looks really good. Okay. That's it. Aloha. Good night, Thank you. Good luck with school. Get A's. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much. Glad you guys had fun.